Hi guys! It's Amy with aim to plan and today I'm here with a short, quick video converting a dashboard planner into a new summer activities planner. So I've gone ahead and pulled out a planner that I have not been using. This is um, the Cyanotype planner. It is a dashboard layout and I didn't really enjoy the colors on the page, but I think that I'll be able to convert this into an activities planner for the summer. Um, and so let's just kind of talk about what I'm thinking here. Now you might not be looking for a summer activities journal like kind of what I'm describing here and you'll see what I'm talking about as I set this up but uh, you might want to or you might have an outdated or a dashboard planner that you're not using right now and this is a good way to kind of uh, reconceptualize, reimagine how you could use the dashboard layout um, and so um, even though I'm doing it for a summer activities journal um, you could do it for whatever else you need and so this is what I'm going to do. I think I only need a couple of months. I do want to use it starting this week. Um, my daughter Sophia is six years old and she's finishing kindergarten. She'll actually be done this week with school and so I wanted to go ahead and just have this ready to go um, for when like the very first day of summer break starts um, and so what I'm gonna do is I didn't really count how many weeks there are but I'll pull out probably only like three months worth of pages um, what I'm gonna do for this is to try to keep it efficient I'm going to use only the inner pages so I uh, don't plan to use the dividers I don't plan to use this page right here, but I do want to use these pages that are um, the inner weekly pages. So the pages that have like the dashboard events page and then the task list on the back. So these are the pages that I'm going to pull out um, and I'm going to do it. Um, I'll do it just for August and September for right now um, and just pull these pages out. Um, so again, just the inner pages here. All right. And then this page has the dashboard layout on it but this is the currently page and so I'm going to set that to the side and again I'm just going to do it for September and you're just pulling the the inner pages the pages um like that um and I'll do the rest pretty much off camera I think depending on how many weeks that we have um so what I have right now are basically um the pages that are going to be the events like the the this section with the dates um, and then the task list on the back and what I'm thinking I'm going to do is use this as a one page kind of spread for each week um, and so instead of having the dashboard be this side um, and this side like this like this side and this side what I'm gonna do instead is since I'm using these inner pages I'll be able to do like an entire week and it'll be this week and then the week will also have my task list on the back um, and so um, I just think that you know I don't know I just really like it being on one page um what I'm going to do with these pages after the fact is you know either toss it or like recycle it or I might put it into Sophia's memory book um and so that's that's kind of where we are um so I also pulled out some colorful box stickers um this is just like in my random like um colorful boxes section um but I want these size boxes um the, the smaller like heading ones um I was trying to find some blue ones I did kind of sort through this um to try to find some but I couldn't find a ton of blue it is you know cyanotype so I'm, I'm trying to stick with the blue but couldn't find any I might yeah I, I should really should have just made some labels um I don't want to use the bigger ones just because I feel like they don't, won't work but this is my idea what I'm going to do is again just kind of keep it front to back um but one of the things that I've noticed about the dashboard layout is that it has one two three four five six and if you count this very top line it has seven lines um and so it's seven lines or seven spaces that you can write and in, in a good way of kind of looking at this is like right here you can see it's Monday through Sunday and if you look at this particular day the lines are exactly the same so it's basically seven lines for each day uh, and so instead of using it um, what I'm thinking is instead of using it for each day what I'm going to do instead is recategorize this so I'm going to create use my headings here and just relabel these as separate categories and again I'm doing it for summer activities but you could do this very easily for just categorizing you can turn it into a goals planner you can turn it into something where you're just kind of tracking things by day but what I want to be able to do is kind of like look at a weekly level on like the different categories that I want to be able to have my daughter kind of like do and like experience during the summer um, and so we don't I'm not really focused on like having something every single day for every single category but I want to make sure that we're at least touching everything once a week um, hopefully that makes sense like for example um, 
for piano lessons. I don't necessarily need to have her sit at the piano every single day, but it's nice for her to like, and for me to be able to track how many times she does like sit down and practice her piano lessons during the summer. Um, and again, I'm, we're not like, I'm not really focusing on like doing it every single day, but I want to keep it consistent, uh, at least more consistent than we have been doing it in previous summers. So this is what I'm going to be doing here. I'll just use this green one just for the sake of doing this video. It's going to like clash very badly. Hopefully <laughs> that doesn't hurt your feelings. Um, but what I'm going to do is basically cover up the dates. All right. And I'm going to do it as high up as possible just to be able to conserve this line right here. So I'm going to put it right here. All right. And I'm going to actually also put it right here. All right. And when you put these labels on there and cover up these dates, you've basically at this point made a, um, a, notes page with like boxes um, and so you're able to just kind of recategorize it and I think this is a great way like I've said at the beginning to reuse and reconceptualize the dashboard planner um, so you don't necessarily have to use it as it's intended with like you know the events day by day um, as it's listed here um, you can just kind of turn it into what you need to um, and I won't go through at this point um, and write in the dates in fact I don't think I'll, I will at all um, or the days of the week, but uh, I'm going to just kind of like in my head visually just have this like just all of the days, but this one just an example, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm thinking. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of talk out loud my like categories here, but um, just so you can see like, obviously now I've covered up all the dates and now I've got the space for eight categories. Um, and so again, for me, I'm doing this for summer activities, but you can re like you can convert the dashboard planner now into eight different categories um, and you could just track it daily, Monday through Sunday, um, if you want to, or you could just use it as journaling space. But I think this would work really well for like a goals planner or for something where you just have eight different habits that you want to kind of track. Um, and if you really like to be able to see all of your habits together in one spot, I think this would really work. So like um, I'm just giving maybe another example of like maybe you have been using this spot for like dinner um, and so you want to track all your dinners. But what if if you want to track all your steps and you want to have all your steps in one section um, and all of your calories in one section so it's just nice to kind of see it in one uh, condensed spot um, I know a lot of people do like to track those types of things across like multiple days which is totally fine that's how I do it personally but I also can see the benefit of tracking it all together so instead of like having it be like this is all of Monday and I'm tracking different categories within Monday we're just kind of flopping it or flip-flopping it and reversing it to where instead of um, on Monday, I'm tracking all the things. Instead, here I'm tracking all the categories and putting all of the stuff in one box. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, I'm gonna grab a pen. And for this first week, I'm gonna put my categories. So the most um, important thing for me is to make sure that she's staying on track with her uh, reading goals. Um, and so the first thing we're gonna put here is reading um, and her language arts, but we'll just focus on reading. Um, so a lot of what I'm doing here for her summer activities is it's going to be reading and but really it's kind of like English language arts um, type of stuff. So the things that are in here are, are of course reading, reading books, but also like focusing on practicing her handwriting um, and making sure that she's writing a little bit more um, and you know just kind of like practicing some of her sounds and like not losing language uh, skills during the summer. So that's going to be here with her uh, language arts, her reading and uh, language arts, English language arts right there. The other one um, is of course math, all right? And I'm gonna put right here math and science together um, just because um, during the summer, I don't want to like emphasize like doing homework or worksheets or any of that type of stuff. I just wanna be able to note when we're able to have conversations about math related concepts or science related concepts. So if we are, for example, at the park and you know we have a conversation about like why the sky is blue or whatever, you know, like just whatever kind of conversations, or more casual conversations um, are like teachable moments. I want to be able to note those, those types of things. So those are like the big like academic things. Uh, in addition to that, I want to be able to keep her on track with um, some of her like progressing skills. Um, I've mentioned piano a couple of times, but also just some other things that we as a family really like to emphasize. And so right here for this section, 
I'm going to put her Bible lessons. Um, so I've done this um, pretty much every summer since she was three years old. I've tried to develop like a curriculum for Bible lessons. Um, and so I want to be able to continue doing that for her in the summer. Um, what I do tend to do is um, she's getting a little bit older now. Sophia is six, like I said. Um, and so she's older now to where we can kind of combine Bible lessons with arts and crafts and some other things. Um, but yeah, that that will be my section to kind of plan out some of that or, or like to note what she's done. All right. So Bible lessons. Um, and then the other one, as I've already mentioned, is going to be piano lessons. And I'm going to classify it into this broad category here of arts and culture. So that will be, of course, arts and crafts, uh, any coloring, painting, uh, any crafty type things that she wants to put together or we sit down as a family and do together, but also any cultural events that we attend. Um, it could be performing arts, it could be visual arts, it could be going to museums, it could also be of course her piano lessons. So I'm kind of combining all of those into this section right here. And then I have all of these other sections. Um, the only other one that I know for sure that I want to have on here is going to be, well actually maybe two. I'll, I'll be able to come up with two more. Um, this one right here is going to be um, a physical activity. Um, and so uh, we want to make sure that she gets out of the house um, and out of her room and off the phone quite a bit. So we want to be able to do that. And then the other one is going to be outdoor time. So not just getting out and playing um, in, in our house, but also just making sure that she goes to the park, goes to the playground, goes swimming, um, you know, just does all of the fun stuff outdoors. So those are the six that I've been able to come up with. If you have any ideas for what should go into to these other two spots, please do let me know. Um, again, I'm trying to develop this schedule to be able to like help Sophia out to not lose her skills, but also just to like, again, stay on track. Um, I might I might add in like maybe family time um, and just like doing things with, you know, her family, like whether it's us, the immediate family or like her extended family, um, and then maybe independent play. But I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm still working out these two. Um, those were like the initial ideas that I had, but um, I'm still kind of like iffy on those, right? And so, um, just to kind of go over this um, this one page right here, now it's a one page. I've recategorized it and I'll be able to, for example, for math and science on Monday, what did we do math and science related on Tuesday? And so on and so forth. And I'll be able to do that for each of the categories. Again, my goal is not to touch on it every single day, but it's to, within a week, make sure that we've done something math and science related, something Bible related, something arts and culture related. So if I am able to write one thing down in this box, I'm really happy about that. Um, and so same thing with physical activity and outdoor time hopefully these are will be a little bit more filled in but these other ones I do want to like continue doing it but it doesn't have to be an every single day type of thing and then I'm still missing two categories and because it's on a single page now I have the spot where I'm going to actually write down what we did but the back side I'm able to kind of come up with my game plan so this is the planning side of it where I'm able to for example look up the different events that are, might be arts related that might be culture related what are some of the things that we want to do to increase our physical activity what are some of the tasks that she wants to have um, for math and science um, what are some of the crafts that I need to purchase or put together or develop in order to kind of put together um, or like you know plan out some of these these things like for example bible lessons what are some of the things that i need to have as hands-on crafty type stuff for the bible lessons for the week all right and so this will be the space where i am doing the planning for the things that land on this side the things that we actually did and what i want to be able to do and kind of plan for to purchase materials and things like that and um, as i already mentioned I think that what I'll do is kind of just maybe just stick this into the back of Sophia's memory book. Maybe not the back, but like at the end of every month, I'll put this into Sophia's memory book so that way she can have a track or like a record of like what she did this summer, uh, summer 2023. Um, but this is what I've been doing to convert or like what I plan to do to convert these dashboard layout pages um, into like different categories here for my use. And of course, I've been focusing on summer activities because I do want to do that. But certainly you could do this for other things, as I've mentioned um, goals, food, anything that you want to categorize. The dashboard layout I think is really perfect for it because you're able to have eight spaces and eight I feel like is a great number in terms of uh, different categories that you can use. So even if it's just like wanting to touch something once a day, like household chores, things like that, um, you can recategorize this into those different categories. So you can see, for example, how many times I swept or how many times I cleaned the bedroom or the bathroom or whatever. So, you know, hopefully this gave you some inspiration. So even if you're not doing summer activities per se, you can definitely convert 
the dashboard layout into something that works for you. So yeah, that's it. Give me ideas for these last two. That's really, um, I'm still working on these last two things. I have like two days to, to come up with a game plan for that. And of course it can change um, as the summer continues too. But yeah, hopefully this was inspiring to you. Hopefully you're able to uh, get some ideas for how you can convert your dashboard layout planner if you want to do so. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to my channel and until the next video. Bye guys.